the soil is the foundation of any landscape scheme. So if you start off with a bad soil, then it follows through into the establishment and the quality of the overall landscape scheme. Most landscape schemes have a requirement to supply clean, uncontaminated soil. There's three types of topsoil available in the landscape market at the moment. There's natural topsoil, natural as dug topsoil, there's manufactured topsoil using good quality products, and there's what we call skip waste soils or muck away soils, which are effectively anything and anything put through a 10 mil screen and then the fines are sold as topsoil. Now first and foremost, manufactured topsoils, if they're using good products, good components will, will be fit for purpose and, and produce a good quality soil. A lot of natural topsoil can be used but it's not always good quality. It's either very heavy in clay or it's soaking wet or it's full of stone and so it, it, it's very variable. But most skipway soils really aren't suitable for landscaping projects. Many landscapers are using them because they're cheap and cheerful. But the reason they're cheap and cheerful is that really they're just a waste soil. One of the big problems in the landscape industry at the moment is a particular contaminant called benzoapyrene, which is a type of hydrocarbon. And that is always elevated in these skipway soils. And so really that they should, shouldn't be really considered for most landscaping applications. The British standard for topsoil requires all soils to be fit for purpose, both horticulturally but also environmentally. And so it's essential that contamination testing is carried out as part of the assessment process. A good manufactured topsoil will be clean. It will be clean of contaminants, free of contaminants, past 100 grey green compost. This is effectively the same thing as you have in your garden compost bin, but it's just done on a much larger scale, a commercial scale. The, the compost itself is usually screened to 10 mil down. It's predominantly organic based, but there's some mineral components in it. The composting process generates a very high temperature up to about 70 degrees C, which uh, has the benefit of killing off many of the plant pathogens and disease and also eradicating weed seeds, which would be in the green waste. The green compost has many benefits, physical, chemical and biological. Physically, compost, when it's applied to a soil, helps improve soil structure, helps with water retention and nutrient retention, and helps with reducing decompaction in the soil. Green compost is full of organic matter and all essential plant nutrients, major, secondary and minor trace element nutrients. It's also biologically very active, so it enhances the microbial content of a recipient soil. The nutrients in green compost are largely in an organic form, which, which means they're in a slow release form. So they release slowly over a period of time. Rather than providing the plants with a huge flush of nutrients right at the beginning, they release over many, many years. We've used soils full of green compost for many years now, and we've gone back to check the fertility levels. And in doing so, we found that actually the nutrients are still there in year two and year three and year four, without the need for additional fertilizers or extra compost. One of the problems with natural topsoils, they have an inherent weed seed bank. That can save you huge costs on herbicide application and time spent weeding during the maintenance program when you get a huge flush of weeds, particularly in the first few years. Most landscape schemes have an element of testing carried out upon them once the soil's been delivered. It's called validation testing and many contractors are falling foul of this now where lower quality soils have been used. The soils are tested once they've been delivered and they're found to be contaminated. We've worked on several projects where this has happened and the soils have all had to be removed at great expense to the contractor. Manufactured topsoils are really produced in the same context as a concrete batching plant these days where you can call in a certain number of loads and a certain number of time. The topsoil is blended off-site at a dedicated location where the material is firstly blended up and then tested and signed off and approved before it's imported. So you're not in the position where soils have arrived at site and then they're rejected because they're not fit for purpose. Well, Jubilee Gardens was completed in uh, the summer of 2012 as part of the Queen's Jubilee celebrations. The site was formerly uh, a, a public open space, but it was si simply just grass lawns, which had to be re replaced every few years uh, due to wear and tear and the, the poor quality of the soils underneath. Pretty early on in the design process, ourselves working with the engineers and the landscape architects decided that manufactured tops would be, would be the best way to go forward on this project, rather than relying on a natural topsoil. There was very little reusable soil on this site, um, there's a very thin layer of topsoil which actually was scraped off and stockpiled and recovered for reuse. 
um, and actually some of the planting beds around the site actually contain that soil, although it was enhanced with compost prior to planting it. The large majority of the soil on this site is a manufactured topsoil. We use two different types, one for the trees and the shrubs, and another specific one for all the lawn areas. The multi-purpose topsoil that was used for the trees and shrubs contained about 35-40% green compost within it. Because of the number of visitors that the gardens receive, there's over 2 million visitors a year, there's a high degree of wear and tear on the lawn areas. So we had to use a special topsoil that was resistant to the compaction and would still support the turf at the same time. So we used a high quality sand for that, blended with a past 100 grey green compost. There's several benefits for using a manufactured topsoil on a project such as this. We wanted something which was consistent. The last load of topsoil needed to be the same as the first load of topsoil, so we had consistently across the whole site. The other problem we had here, because of the logistics of it, we could only take a certain amount of topsoil at any one time. So we wanted to be able to call in topsoil as and when we needed it, rather than having to bring in huge volumes and store them on the site. The landscape scheme included a very broad range of plant species, some of which were intolerant of lime. So part of the soil specification and the soil selection process, we had to consider that and make sure that all the soils brought into this site, both topsoil and subsoil, were free from lime. Now the use of green compost in manufactured soils allows you to do that because it has a very low lime content. Although the pH is high, the lime content is low. So the moral of the story is use a BS grey topsoil blended with a past 100 grey green compost and make sure you get it properly tested or ask the supplier for a current declaration of analysis to confirm that it meets the British standard or get it tested specifically against the specification for the project you're working on.